Hi everyone, and welcome back to part 4 of my introduction to Dart. In this video, we will learn about collections and generics. We are now ready to talk about collections in Dart. And using a generic definition, we could say that a collection is a group of objects. In Dart, there are various types that we can use to represent collections, and these are known as lists, sets, and maps. In this video, we are going to start talking about lists. And a list is an ordered group of objects. So over here, I have a new pad. And if you still have the code from the previous video, you can create a new pad just like this. And the first thing that we're going to do is to quickly remove this code. And then we can create our first list. So here we can type in var prime numbers equals and then open square bracket and inside square brackets we can type in 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 7 and then we can have a semicolon in the end so this is a list that contains the first four prime numbers and dart can infer that this is a list of integers so if we want we can print this list and print prime numbers and if we run this code this is what we get so we get a list of two, three, five, and seven. Okay, so let's see what things we can do with a list. Now, if we want, here we can add some more values to this list. And to do that, we can type prime numbers dot add all. And add all is a method of the list class that takes an iterable as an input. And just so you know, Iterable is an abstract class that defines a collection of values that can be accessed sequentially, and the list class implements Iterable. So here we are going to pass in a new list literal, which we can define to contain 11, 13, 17, and 19, like this, with a semicolon in the end. And what this method does is to append the contents of this list literal to our prime numbers variable. So we can run the code again, and we can see that on the console we have the first eight prime numbers. Next, I want to show you how we can add a single value to our list. So to do that, we could call add all and pass in a list that has only one value, but there is a simpler way. So here we can type prime numbers dot add and then we pass just one value which is going to be 23 which is the next prime number after 19 and again we can run the code and see that we now have all the prime numbers all the way to 23 okay so we have seen how to create a list and how to add elements to it and one thing that I'd like to say is that list is a very versatile class which contains a lot of useful methods so just to give you a glimpse of this, I'm going to type in prime numbers and then dot. And we can see that the editor suggests a number of methods that we could call. And this is quite a long list of possible methods. So we're not going to cover all of these methods right now. So if you're curious to see how they work, you can try them out by yourself. And in any case, I will explain any additional methods that we will use as we make progress with this course. So let's continue on the next video. We are now ready to look at a new type of collection called a map. And a map is a collection of key value pairs. So let's see how we can create a map. I'm going to delete this code. Then here I can type var person equals, and then I'm going to have a couple of curly braces like this. And then inside the curly braces, I can type, for example, single quotes, name, and then column. And then within single quotes, Andrea, and then I can have a comma. And then on a new line, I could type in within single quotes, age, and then column, and then the number 34. And then again with single quotes, height, and then column, and then 1.84 as a number. So this is how we define a map. So if I wanted to retrieve the value that corresponds to the name key, I could type in print, 
and then person, and then within square brackets, I can type in the key. So single quotes and then name, like this. And then I could try to run this code and I can see that on the console, I get Andrea, which is the value that corresponds to the name key. By the way, here I've used the var keyword to define my map. And this means that the compiler will automatically infer the types of the keys and values that I've stored in this map. If I wanted, I could define the type of my map explicitly, and we will see how to do that a little later when we talk about generics in Dart. For now, we are going to let the compiler do the work for us and just use var. Another thing that I want to show you is what happens if we try to print the value of a key that doesn't exist. So here, rather than the name, I could try to print the weight like this. And this is a key that doesn't exist. So if I try to run this code, I get a value of null. The next thing I can show you is how to set a value for a given key. So here I could type person and then within square brackets, single quotes and then weight and then equals and 70, for example. And now that I've defined this key, I could run the code again, and I can see that the console now prints 70. Finally, I'd like to say that just like the list class, map also has a number of useful methods that we can use. So here I can type in person and then dot, and the editor shows me a number of different methods. And once again, this is just a brief introduction to maps and we will learn more about how to use them in the Flutter course. One thing that you may wonder is why I've chosen to represent a person object with a map. And if you remember, when we talked about classes, we have seen how to create a person class with name, age and height properties. So what I would say is that we should always prefer to use classes rather than maps to represent data models. In any case, maps are a generic collection type that is frequently used as an intermediate type, especially when loading structured data from a server, for example, in JSON format. Okay, so let's continue on the next video. In the last two videos, we have learned about lists and maps. And up to this point, we have left to the compiler the task of deciding the types of the values inside our collections. Now is a good time to talk about another feature of the Dart language called generics. And generics are a way to improve type safety in our programs, meaning that we can use them to write code that is safer. So let me show you what I mean. In the main function over here, I'm going to define again the prime numbers list that we have seen previously. And this time I'm going to use a slightly different syntax. So here I can type var prime numbers equals, and then I'm going to type list, open and close bracket, and then semicolon. So this code that I have here simply creates an empty list. And in fact, it is equivalent to using an empty list literal. So I'm going to use a Dart comment here to say that this list, open and close bracket is equivalent to using open and close brackets like this. Next, I can type in prime numbers, dot add all and then within brackets I can type in 2, 3, 5 and 7 like this and then I could add a new value and type prime numbers dot add and this time within brackets I'm going to use single quotes and type Andrea like this. As you can see the compiler doesn't complain about this code and the reason for that is that I have not specified that I want the value of my list to be of a certain type. In order to fix this, I'm going to use generics to add a type annotation to my list declaration. So over here, I can type in angular bracket, and then inside here, I can specify a type int, and then close angular bracket like this. And now we can see that when we try to add Andrea to the list, the compiler complains and it tells me the argument type string can't be assigned to the parameter type int. So because I've explicitly declared my list to only contain values of type int, 
then I can't add any values of a different type. Next, let's take a look at the map that we have defined here. As we know, map is a collection of key value pairs and we can also use generics to add a type annotation when we declare our map. So one way to do this is to use angular brackets. So here I can open an angular bracket and then we need to define the types of both the keys and the values. So here I want the keys to be of type string like this. And in this particular case, I want the values to be of any type. And you can see here that the first value is a string the second value is an int and the third value is a die ball. So in this case, I can use dynamic as the type of my values like this. And with this change, I could try to add a new value to my map and type, for example, person and then choose a key that is not a string. So for example, the number 10 and then equals 20. And when I do that, I can see that the compiler complains telling me that the argument type int can't be assigned to the parameter type string. So in summary, we can use type annotations to create code that is safer to use. But this is not the only advantage of generics. For example, let's suppose that we want to create a function that returns the first four prime numbers. So to do that, we could type in list and then get four prime numbers like this. And then we could use the arrow operator and then return a string literal two, three, five, and seven, like this. However, if we omit the type annotation from our list, then it is not obvious what this type should be. Instead, if we say that this function returns a list of integers, like this, then there is no ambiguity and other people using our code know that this function will only ever return a list of integers. So to wrap up, I can say that using type annotations is not mandatory in Dart. However, we will use them whenever possible in this course because they make our code safer and easier to understand. Okay, so let's continue on the next video. This is the end of part four. This introduction to Dart is a free sample of my upcoming Flutter course. So if you want to receive updates about my course, you can sign up on my website codingwithflutter.com and you will receive a promotional code when the course goes live. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.